Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on Wednesday, Ascension Week. Pretty quiet range bound week. Um, kind of got what we wanted yesterday, but then we got stopped out on a EuroCAD. Popped through that line just as we expected over CPI down to, uh, I don't know, 80, 86. Um, because it was driven by inflation and I don't know, it just looked pretty clean. The break looked pretty clean. We, we held, uh, we held it, left our stops at break even and, and got, got cut out of this thing on the move back to uh, 50. So moving on, the calendar looks pretty weak today. Um, we got final CPI in Europe. And we've got Bank of England, Lee Bailey speaking, housing starts out of the U.S. Nothing, nothing really great. I guess Bailey is kind of important. Um, as far as the charts are concerned, this chart we like, Euro Aussie. And it's basically like funny. It looks like Aussie CAD's about to make a move. So if you think that we were short Euro CAD yesterday, we're looking to go long Euro Aussie today. Uh, what does that mean? that is long or short Aussie cat. Uh, and so what does that chart look like? Is this gonna make a move? Has it already made a move? I remember speaking of this level 91, 11, uh, about 10 days ago. Never really traded up through that. Now we have this triple bottom down here at 89.45. You can see vol is constricted. It's not great. 89.20 is uh, two and a half sigma. Um, but is Aussie CAD going to go lower? I don't know. I mean, the, the big elephant in the room here is Aussie unemployment, uh, which is Thursday morning, Swiss time, 3 a.m. So those of you in America, 9 p.m. Um, Wednesday night, that could be a big driver. <laughs> Uh, if stocks tumble over, uh, that could be a big driver. Or, you know, if, if um, you know, euro inflation number comes in hot, which seems unlikely, unlikely this euro Aussie could pop. Uh, anyway, this is, this is one of the focuses, euro Aussie. Let's pull this old stock chart up and just talk about how just absolutely bizarre this is now, 4130. Um, since basically all month so oh sorry since since the first of april um we're just mean reverting to 4130 it's very odd um the top of this range is it's called 4210 that looks like the likely side to me too many bears in the house um you know, obviously this debt ceiling conversation, I guess it's just people are waiting for this to get resolved or not resolved. Uh, the bottom of this range is 4060. You can see how vol is so constricted. It's just, just astounding and fairly annoying. Let's go to rates here. Uh, not a whole lot, but rates higher yesterday. A couple of, you know, a couple of better than expected numbers. Um, on the uh, on the rate side, retail sales mainly came in a little bit hotter. We saw rates pop up to um, 358, which of course moves dollar yen. We tried dollar yen on the long side yesterday. Unfortunately, it did not work for us. We were fucking around right here through 30. Um, and you know what looks like should have been just fine these little moves down here just kind of fucked us. Um, frustrating day yesterday where we felt like we had a couple of good positions on, um, but then the retrace stopped us out. So that's fairly annoying. Um, the other trade that we missed is gold through 2000. We talked about that yesterday on the video. This is a break trade and it was a break trade. 2000 yielded uh, 1985. Gold can go lower still, markets long gold. Um, you can sell this on a rally today up towards 2000. Um, 
with the idea that I think there's a pretty good chance. I just have a feeling Powell's going to be hawkish based on all of the malarkey that's come out of all of these guys' mouths this week. Powell at the end of the week is going to be hawkish. Um, Europe's not even going to be in. There's going to be no liquidity. A bunch of, um, you know, monkey American FX dealers uh, and algos trading. You could see a move in gold. Um, I don't know. Down to 1850. Um, 1858 looks like good support down there. So keep an eye on this. And if you um, if you're savvy enough to to be short already, I think you can hold this. Uh, you can hold this short going into the end of the week uh, with the idea that liquidity is going to be low. But it was a very clean break, and there's been not much of a retrace, right? So your your retrace is up to 93. Back at 90, um, gold, looks, gold looks offered. One last chart that we've been talking about since Monday is this uh, dumbass dollar Swiss, which is not really moving too much, um, 89.61. The only reason we were looking at this, and we're very skeptical because it's been so offered, it's just this technical pattern, right? A lot of people are going to be watching this. Just be patient. Um, you know, 89.86 looks like. There's some clear above that. If Euro Swiss is bid, if um, there's bullish news on the dollar, um, and I guess if you know you're you're a masochist, um, you might want to try a long dollar Swiss up through basically 90, 90 centimes, effectively. Um, so keep an eye on that. The rest of it, nothing really great. Dollar max is a little bit stretched, um, but it has has bounced. Um, we're not buying dollar max. The, the macro story there is very very strong in Mexico, as you can see by this chart. Um, I think seven year highs for the peso, exact opposite of the rand, which is you know I don't think is worthy of even toilet paper anymore. This is probably a buy into eighteen seventy. Um, dollar rand, but we're not we're not playing in that space at the moment. Uh, look, frontal lobe uh, at the open here, Euro Aussie. We're watching that pretty closely, and then we will continue to watch that dollar Swiss, see how that evolves, and try and get ourselves short some gold at a safe and reasonable level. Have a good one, peeps. Talk to you tomorrow.